We're living in a world where you are the world's superpower. I don't think that sits very easily with everyone at the moment. I think there is a sense of wanting to retrench. But if we're going to have a single superpower in the world, I want it to be this one. I don't want it to be China, where there isn't rule of law, where there isn't freedom of religion, where there is, God forbid, very little freedom to practice for the media. So I think America still needs to take on the role of leadership, but it's a much more complicated, less black and white role than it used to be. I mean, take, for example, what is happening over Iran at the moment. Today was meant to be the deadline for the Iranian negotiations to meet some kind of a deal on Iran's nuclear program. But there are lots of moving parts here, and it's not entirely clear what America's leverage is. You have to deal with the other five world powers that are part of these negotiations. If we walk away from the negotiating table, which is still quite possible, the Americans may decide, look, we're not satisfied that the Iranians are going to give us the right to inspect their nuclear facilities anytime, anywhere. We don't think that they're going to actually do what they've said on uranium enrichment and um, doing that in country. If we walk away from those negotiations, however, the sanctions, the global sanctions regime, which has brought Iran to the negotiating table in the first place, may well not hold up. American sanctions, I think, will hold up, but I'm not sure that, Iranian, that, that the United Nations sanctions will hold up because you have China and Russia on the Security Council of the United Nations who are less in favor. So America has a lot of leverage, but it doesn't have 100% leverage in those particular negotiations. Look at the crisis that we're dealing with. I mean, what is it, 6.14 in the evening. 14 minutes ago, Greece was meant to repay some of its IMF debt. As far as I know, and if anyone has a Twitter feed with me, then they can tell me, they didn't do so. The president this afternoon tried to make it very clear that he doesn't think Greece's debt crisis is a crisis for all of you. I'm not sure we can afford to be so blasé. What did we learn from the crash of 2008? What was the one thing we learned? What happens in Athens, Greece, affects people in Athens, Ohio. We are living in a globalized world. Yes, most of Greece's debt is owed to official creditors. So the chances of it affecting people's pensions around this room are fairly minimal. But the world economy is still fragile. The stock market yesterday had its worst day in two years. Why? Because of uncertainty around Greece. So I'm not sure we can afford that much more uncertainty. Of course, Europe will be the place that pays the price. But if we have the euro falling because of what's happening in Greece, what does that mean for American exporters? All of these things are linked. And I just think that to say, oh, well, the Greek debt crisis is another Greek tragedy, and to be able to slough it off like that is a little bit premature.